Hey guys, Average Joe Kill here. Are you new to Tarkov? Not sure what the little symbols next to your character outline are when you get shot? Not sure where your extracts are or any of the other 1 million questions that new players have to this hardcore survival loot and scoot first person shooter developed by Battlestate Games? Stick around, we'll cover everything from map knowledge to extracts, small tips and tricks I've learned while teaching players on how to play this high intensity first person shooter. If you like the video, please sub, comment, and like the video as I plan to make this a series on the channel. While you're there, if you could, head over to my Twitch, hit that follow button, twitch.tv, average joke kill. And if you would like to actually learn in person, like uh, for me, I'm a more in-person kind of learner, you can go ahead and click on the Discord link at the bottom. That Discord is completely centered around new players, guys. Uh, put a lot of man hours into working for it to make it the most informative Discord that's currently out. Thanks so much, and let's get to the video. Today's lesson on Tarkov for Dummies. First lesson in today's video on Tarkov for Dummies is, well, what is Escape from Tarkov? Well, Escape from Tarkov is a hardcore first-person shooter with MMO mechanics and elements incorporated with it with a focus on weapon customization in depth, realistic gameplay and gunfight mechanics, and escaping from this world that we know as Tarkov. In this game, during a raid, you can expect everything from fractures to heavy to light bleeds to dehydration, starvation, and exhaustion. You will have lost limbs throughout the raid as you're getting injured, and if your body doesn't repair them or you don't repair them, it'll actually seriously hinder your movement throughout the rest of the raid. If you die within the raid, everything you brought in will be lost. There is an insurance option, though, but that's only if someone else doesn't take your gear out for their own personal profit. This is a very rewarding game but at the same time, very punishing towards your mistakes. All right, guys, next we're going to go over the types of ailments in which you can receive in Tarkov and how to get rid of them. All right, guys, so before we go over anything else about the game, I think the most important thing you guys need to know right now is how to keep your character healthy, how to repair him and how to keep him in the fight before we go over anything else. Um, there's been plenty of times when I was teaching newer players, they couldn't describe to me what kind of injury they had, um, because they didn't know how to look it up, which we'll go over in a little bit. But where I'm at right now is the Escape from Tarkov wiki, um, in the medical item section. Basically, this shows every single medical item within the Escape from Tarkov, uh, game. With this being said, uh, this link... To the wiki will be in below in the description but we'll start going over it so you have your basic items you have your your uh basic bandages you have your healing items that heal hp on your character you have repair items which will go in and repair a lost limb and then you will have uh pain relievers essentially morphine uh augmentin and then we'll go on from there um but Going over this first one, you see an aseptic bandage right here, guys. Basically what this is, is a basic bandage that removes light bleeding. If you can see, it looks like two little uh, blood droplets. And that is one of the most basic bandages you can have right now, uh, starting out. And then you have an army bandage, which does the exact same thing, but you get two of them. Uh, so if you see this symbol on your character, on the outline of your character, that's telling you you have light bleed, and to go ahead and uh, just use a bandage. Um, from there, if you still have hit points on that limb then you can start using something that has a uh, hit points that repair your hit points your hp which would be like an ai2 med kit which we call in the escape from tarkov world cheese um you might hear hey let me give you some cheese that just because it looks like a slice of cheese guys like um then uh you have your car kit your salewa your afac and your or correction ifac and your afac so what these are are just Bigger med kits that can actually repair heavy and light bleeds. If you see this, this car actually repairs a light bleed. But with that being said, if you repair a light bleed with a car kit, you will actually use more HP, which you'll see right here. Max HP heal use, 70. Um, if you click on the car kit, you will see right... Right here, healing removes 50 HP from the first aid kit. So healing a light bleed removes an extra 50 HP. So you go from 220 
down to 170 and you have yet to even repair any part of your body. Um, so what I highly recommend is if you have a light bleed, have a bandage, an army bandage or something that stops light bleeds, then use your car first aid kit. Um, then if you go down a little further, you see Salewa. This is probably one of the more common types of medical items that you're going to see between the IFAC and the AFAC, which we'll get to in a moment. Um, these three all do the same thing. This is a two slaughter. This is a one slaughter. AFAC I prefer because it's a one slot weapon or a one slot healing item. And uh, this is a two slot. So you save space, but you still get 400 HP per. But this also removes heavy bleed. So if you look here, this is a different type of ailment picture. And what that's saying is you have a heavy bleed. Um, heavy bleeds use a lot of HP off of your first aid kits. So what I recommend is going up, correction down, I'm sorry, and get rid of these heavy bleeds in a whole nother way, which you have your S March tourniquet, your K lock, B hemostatic applicator, or your hemostatic tourniquet, your cat tourniquet. But these, I think the best one is a K lock. You get three of them. So you get three heavy bleed uses. Um, then once again, after you fix those heavy bleeds, then go ahead and use those medical items. Now, heavy bleeds, you actually create a blood trail. And I know from experience that you can actually hunt someone down with a blood trail. <laughs> um, so get that heavy bleed fixed as quickly as possible. Um, now, if you do lose a limb, which essentially is between your head, your left and right arm, your thorax, which is your chest, your stomach and your two legs, if one of them hits zero, that's what we call a blacked out limb. So you can actually fix those and bring them back to life, so to speak. And the way you would do that is with a CMS kit or a serve kit. Um, so what you can do is you choose whatever one you want. One's a 16 second use and one's a 20 second use. The difference between the serve 12 and the CMS though the Serve 12 will restore more of your HP. Each time you repair a blacked out limb, more and more of your HP, your max HP on that limb will actually go lower. Um, I've had a blacked out limb before that I pretty much had two left out, two HP left on it. So pretty much one shot from any weapon is going to black it out again. Um, that's a five use. That's a 15. Uh, this also removes right here, which is fracture. Uh, fractures, you can get from jumping too high. You can get from getting shot. The list goes on to how you can fracture a part of your body. If you do fracture a leg, you will limp. Um, unless you have a painkiller of some sort, which we'll go over here in a second. What you need to do for this to get rid of a fracture is a simple splint. So a mobilizing splint right here, which you see, removes a fracture, removes a fracture. Um, once again, best in slot is the aluminum splint, which you see right here. Um, cause that's five uses compared to the one use you're going to get here. Um, if your arm is broken, you'll notice that your movement is a lot more jagged. You can't really hold your weapon still. And your guy will visibly and correction. He will verbally let you know when he has a broken leg. Cause when you try and run on it with a painkiller, he'll start screaming out in pain. Um, so painkillers guys. You will hear a lot of times playing with more veteran players, hey, let's PK up. They're referring to, let's take a painkiller because we're about to get in a fight. That way, if you do have a blacked out limb, your body isn't going to react negative, negatively to it because of these painkillers. And you can see right here, it says removes pain, but um, it removes pain for 95 seconds. And then you have your augmenting for 150, but read... As you can see, get in the wiki and read. This also uh, removes toxin, which isn't implemented yet. Um, and then some of them do some other things like removes contusion. Uh, morphine is 300 seconds. Your ibuprofen is 280. Uh, but then you also have to look here. There's some negative side effects. So your energy, your metabolism, which if it hits zero, you can die, is negative 10. And then your hydration is negative 15. You can die of dehydration. So a lot of people, uh, more of the veteran players, like to use the ibuprofen. Um, between the ibuprofen and then the Vaseline and the Golden Star. Um, those are about the three main ones that people use. 
to uh, remove pain to get ready for a firefight or to get out of a sticky situation quick. Uh, next, you're going to see right here a Grizzly. This is a basically a one-all medical kit. As you can see, it removes light bleeds, heavy bleeds, fractures, contusions, pain. It removes a bunch of stuff. And it, look, it restores HP too, and there's 1,800 HP on it. It is a four-slaughter, but a lot of veteran players use a Grizzly. Um, and a lot, of, uh, a lot of players in general actually use a Grizzly because it is very convenient. You're not switching between, oh, do I need a splint right now? Oh, I need to get a, something that gets rid of heavy bleed. You can just take this and get rid of it all. Um, so now that we're kind of done with the, the basic overview of medical items and how to heal, we're actually going to go into a raid, and I'm going to show you these, these issues that can arise as a PMC. And uh, prior to that, we're just going to go over the general basis of the, the main menu and kind of what you're looking at. And then we'll go ahead and get an offline raid, which I'll discuss further again later. And uh, we'll go ahead and get working on that. The main title screen of Escape from Tarkov. Um, this isn't a brand new account, so uh, I'm already chosen my, my character, um, which I chose Yusek. You have a choice between Bear and Yusek. Yusek is more of the Western uh, style player. He starts off with an M4 or two, an MP5, and then the Bear is the Russian operative who starts off with AK variants and things similar to uh, like a Russian. Um, so what you're seeing right here is just the, the overall opening menu. Um, we're just going to pop into Hideout real quick. Um, to go ahead and show you guys kind of what you're expecting within the hideout. Um, so right here, you see that I have a hideout pretty much fully upgraded. Um, I left one thing. I don't feel like doing this wipe, which is fine. So what you're looking at here is there's areas in which you can craft stuff for quests. Uh, by bringing certain items in, you can craft. And then your passive income I was referring to earlier. You can actually claim a Bitcoin because you're Bitcoin farming by using graphics cards to Bitcoin farm. And you can go ahead and actually sell to a trader, which all Bitcoins need to go to therapist. You can actually sell them. Look at that. You can make money. And I that's just passive income, guys. Um going back to the hideout, uh if you're non-EOD, so a base account. You'll have to actually upgrade your stash. Uh, you actually have a generator in which you can turn it on and off. Um, but that's just the base basic overview. We'll actually go into another video that completely covers uh, Tarkov and then the, the hideout portion of this game. But what we're, we're actually about to do now is go into an offline raid, which is a great place to practice, by the way. And I'm going to get some ailments, and I'm going to show you guys kind of how to fix them. Um, what we're going to go over right here is kind of how to keep your character up. So you have your earpieces, your headwear, your face cover, body armor, eyewear, holster, sling on back. So your slinged weapon, your on back weapon, a sheath of a item, some pockets, your tactical rig, and your backpack. So uh, just kind of make this easy. What we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and hit up on a weapon. We'll just build a... We'll just use uh, we'll use this M4 right here. It's a little built M4, nothing special on it. If you double click, you can look at the stats. You can see recoil and stuff like that. Um, so now we got my gun. Uh, Earpieces are uh, communication devices to help you hear better. Um, hearing protection. So if you go to Ragman, uh, you won't have as many options as I do right now because I have him at level 3, almost level 4. But we'll just buy a set of earpieces. It really doesn't matter. It's all personal preference. There isn't one better than the other. Um, it's all personal preference. And we'll go ahead and buy a piece of ears. And then I want something to cover my white face. So I'm going to go ahead and buy a face cover. And then um, from here, I need something to protect my head. So I'll look for a helmet. Uh, let's just go ahead and buy a helmet. So from here, I'm going to move it to the your earpiece, your headwear, and your face cover. Now, you, there are two different types of rigs. Um, one is a armored rig, so it's actually something that takes place of your body armor and also 
is a rig in which you could put your items. Um, we're gonna go ahead and put one on. Uh, for teaching purposes, we'll go ahead and put on another armor. And then we'll buy a rig. So we'll just buy something small. If you're kind of curious how many slots it has, you can right click it and click inspect. And it'll tell you how many slots are in this rig. So as you can see, this one's 10, this one's 20. So we'll just buy this one, make it make it nice and easy. Go back to your character, insert. Let's buy some mags. Actually, I have a couple mags. Um, you're gonna go ahead and load ammo, which you'll see me doing right here. This is a quick way to load ammo. All right, guys. So. When loading into a raid, the biggest thing you want to have is something to stop a heavy bleed. I'm not really too worried about light bleeds, but preferably something to stop a light bleed also. Um, as you can see, I actually don't have nothing to stop a light bleed. So I'll go to rag correction. I'll go to therapist. And let's go buy a bandage. Let's buy a couple bandages. And we'll put them on. So if... You put them in your pockets or on your rig. You can actually hotkey them to your number slots as you see on the bottom. So I'll go ahead and push it down and just drag it to the four. Um, as you can see, I got four listed twice and five listed twice. We'll go over that at a later date, um, another video. Uh, there's actually a specific reason why I have that. So I got my light bleeds covered. I got my heavy bleeds covered. I got my heels covered. I got my body repair covered and I got my fractures covered. So I am good on ailments. And then if you want, you can add some painkillers. Like I'm choosing Vaseline for this case. Um, that way, if I hit pain, uh, I'll be fine. Uh, Doc's case, don't worry about it. We'll discuss it later. Um, so I am now officially ready for my first raid. So what we'll do as we're learning We'll go into an offline raid first. Now, what you're seeing right here is an actual, uh, the pre-game screen. So you have your PMC and a scav. PMC, if you die, you lose everything that you have in your step that you currently brought into raid. A scav, guys, is a random gear set in which you go in as a scav, um, which is the AI of Escape from Tarkov, and you become a player scav. Um, basically, it's the AI, but you know, you go in and play as them. If you make it out of that raid, everything that you brought out with that scav can be transferred over to your PMC. So it's kind of like a no risk freebie raid, which I highly recommend starting out. You use your scav every chance you get. Um, moving on, in this case, we're going to go ahead and do our PMC. I'm going to go to factory, the map factory. Uh, times are in military times, guys, so ensure that you know that 1528 is actually 328 in the afternoon and 03 is 3 in the morning, so it's going to be dark. Um, I'll choose next. For the case of me wanting to learn this map, I'm going to go online or offline mode. I'm going to enable PVE, AI difficulty as online, AI amount as online. You can obviously move this up if you want. But I'm going to keep it normal just for this case. I'll click ready. Now, an offline raid, guys, as we're loading in, everything I have on me, if I was to die right now, I would not lose any of it. Think of it as practice mode. Um, use this time to play offline to learn where extracts are, uh, where certain loot spots are, where your mission is in advance, to, in advance. You actually will have quests in which you have stuff to find, and now, let's go ahead and uh, let's injure myself a little bit. So we're actually going to go up here and we're going to jump off. Just so I can show you an injury. 
Yeah, we'll go over Mikey. map knowledge and stuff. Don't really pay attention to the map as much as we are going to pay attention to here right now, guys. So let's break a leg. Oh, I didn't get a broken leg there. I got injured. If you saw my overlay on the top left pop up. There you go. I got a blacked out arm now. As you can see, my aim is actually moving a lot more now. You see me? And that's because if you press tab and go to health, you see I have a blacked out arm. So I need to fix that. Oh, now I got two blacked out arms and a heavy bleed. So I need to fix this heavy bleed. I'm going to use the K-lock for this heavy bleed. And you'll see that it stops. There you go. Stop. are being mean. Uh, let's go ahead and run away. So I'm a little messed up right now. I don't want to keep pushing fights in this case. I need a heal. So let's go ahead and do a little healing. Close these doors behind us so scabs don't come in after us. Scabs in here are really difficult guys if you're not used to them. So to repair all you're gonna do is find the repair the body part that you actually want to repair. Um, I recommend dragging to the blacked out limb over right clicking and using. The reason being is because it might repair a body part you're not ready for repair on yet. So with this being the case, I'm currently repairing. As you can see, I'm stapling up and so on and so forth. So now that we are repaired, you can see that I lost HP. It was 60 and on this left arm, and now it's 19, guys. Uh, that's the CMS issue on using the CMS over a serve 12, for instance. Now I'm full health on it. You can also just go ahead and right click. You don't have to be in the menu to move and use this heals. Now, uh, one thing that a lot of people don't know, let's go ahead and heal up real quick. And say, as I'm healing, I hear someone. So I hear someone, I can right click, and I can cancel that, that healing animation that is done. I won't receive the health, but I can cancel it. Very valuable. Um, let's go ahead and break a leg so you guys can see the, uh, the consequence of breaking your legs. drop right here and look now I have a light bleed as you can see the two little droplets and I can't run right now guys so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a Vaseline let's remove that pain it will take away the pain so I can run and I'm hurting a guy's over here coughing going ow so on and so forth this gives me a chance to run away and let's go ahead and fix that light bleed I didn't have a broken leg, so I didn't have to use a splint from falling. But now I'm really messed up. So what I would do is I would serve up my legs first, is uh, repair my legs, and I would probably start moving towards extract. Now that is the basic outline, guys, on just how to keep yourself alive in raid. Um, we're not really trying to loot right now. We're just mainly showcasing the healing animations, how long something takes, how to get out of a sticky situation. As you can see, I would have been a a duck out of water if I would have stayed right there in the open to try and heal. So find a place to heal. I got one on each side now. So let's go in and just move towards extract. So you press double O. So doubles double O will tell me where my Ooh, scared me. Um, we'll actually go ahead and... Let's find our extract. 
Got him. As you can tell, headshots are pretty deadly in this game, guys. Ooh. Oh. No. Where is he? I don't have nothing to stop heavy bleeds, so because of that, I have to use my med kit. Oh, he got me. So because of that, though, it's okay that I die. Um, I don't lose anything, and it keeps things going. But as you can kind of see, I got pretty messed up. I was trying to move towards extract. And that basically covers the healing, guys. So our next video we're going to go ahead and focus on is... All right, guys, for the next video, I plan on doing basic stash knowledge. Overall and questing tabs within the game, the soft skills in which you need to level up to make your PMC better and stronger, traders, and the flea market. Um, it's going to be a lot to go over for the next video, but if you guys like the video, once again, hit that like and subscribe button. Head over to my Twitch channel. Come say hi sometime. I really appreciate you guys sticking around for this video, and I hope that this actually ends up becoming a real good series. Uh, throw any recommendations down on later videos in which you think that I should do. And once again, guys, thanks so much for stopping by.